make $2,000 a day with advertorial blog posts. Okay, so you guys all know what advertorials are. I don't need to, uh, don't need to explain that, right? Oh, shoot, is this working? I guess this is not working. It's okay, I'll just do it. I, I can use my finger. It's not plugged in, it's all right. No worries. So there's five keys to a highly profitable advertorial. Okay, so five keys. Elicit emotions in your headline. Okay, so we touched upon some of these points yesterday. Um, in, this, in this particular one, I want to show you how I format an advertorial, how I, uh, the fonts that I use, and how I structure and kind of my thought process when I put together an advertorial. So tap into their primal emotions. So yesterday we talked about digging into the reptilian part of the brain, the id, right? So you want to tap into the most primal emotions, sex, fight or flight, fear, pain, I mean, you think about all the most base primary emotions, your headline should tap into at least one of those, if not two. If you're really good, maybe you can even put in three, you know? So you know, think about, uh, there's good ones are saving your children, right? So think about, you know, stuff that people will, will die for even, like their children or uh, children are good ones, but just very, very highly emotionally charged headlines, highly readable. So here's something that I think a lot of people skip over, because I, most people do not read, okay? So when they go to, and I'll show you how I structure my advertorial to, so they don't have to read the whole advertorial to get the concept of it, but people will not actually read your advertorial. If you look at heat maps, um, you will see that a, a user recording, so Hotjar is a great, um, a great software that you can install where, where you can see how people are reading. And interestingly enough, on, on the heat maps that I've seen, the, most, um, the, the parts that get the most heat are the sentences that have the most emotionally charged uh, sentences, right? So that means that that's what they're paying attention to, okay? So it speaks to the inner voice in their head. So we all have an inner dialogue or inner people or person that we have in our head. It's kind of this hidden person that uh, we talk to, right? We all... We all talk to ourselves. They say, we say it's, uh, it's not crazy to talk to yourself. It's only crazy if you talk back, right? So speak to the inner voice that's in their head. So you need to talk to not their conscious self, right? Because we all have our conscious self, the person who we think we are, the person who we think we represent to society. Then there's that person within all of us, the person that we don't, most of us don't want to uh, uh, confront. It's the person that... that that has to take all of our negative emotions, all of our negative experiences, all of the hurt, the pain that we go through, we push it to this other person inside of us, the unconscious self, okay? Otherwise, we'd go crazy because we'd be thinking of all the negative emotional shit that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So in order to cope, we have what's called ego defense mechanisms. So an ego defense mechanism is your unconscious self, which is your shadow self. There's a great book call um on there's a lot of great books on shadow self look into carl young all of carl young's books i would read if i were you he really really talks my favorite book of his or one of my favorites is the unconscious self he talks about how we all have a person within us the person that we don't want to meet the person that has to deal with all of our negative baggage so that's who we want to talk to because our conscious self is not actually a very rational person we like to think we're rational but I, I think we'd be very, very surprised to find that a lot of our decisions are made from this person, this shadow self that we have inside of ourselves that drives a lot of our decision-making factors. In fact, I think we can all relate. I mean, I like the idea of working out. I like the idea of going, I mean, look, I like the idea of eating a vegan diet, but I don't do it, right? Why don't we do it? We know we can do, we know what's right. We know what we're supposed to do. It's because we have the inner person in our, in our, in, that are in, that's inside of each of us that is actually controlling the ship and keeping us, our conscious self, from making those actions. So that's who you want to talk to in your marketing. Talk to that person, and that person has more control over the conscious observer. So what we see as our reality is the conscious observer. That's what we think that we're in charge of this ship. That's who most people are trying to talk to in their marketing. And that's the weakest person to talk to in the chain of command in the brain. And you also have to promote an offer that works. No-brainer. I, I can't tell you how many times I've beat myself up and, 
and sp spun circles and wrote and rewrote advertorials only to find out that vertical sucks or that offer sucks or the buyer sucks. <laughs>